Today we have the 2022 Mazda CX-5 and it's got a little refresh for this year. We've got a refresh on the front and back styling, Mazda even says there's improved driving dynamics and even a little bit more power for some engines. There are even different names for the trim levels, so there's a lot that's actually kind of different on this and I'm going to try to go through all the trim levels in this video, take it for a test drive and tell you everything about it. Let's get started. Real quick before we get started, thank you so much for watching. My name is Nolan, but also a huge thank you to Town North Mazda for letting me take the CX-5 out to show you guys. Town North Mazda is in Richardson, Texas in the DFW area. If you're in the market for a new Mazda, please be sure to check them out in the description below. All right, y'all, let's take a look at the exterior details. And this now has a little refresh with the latest Kodo design philosophy that Mazda has been rocking with with all their vehicles. Starting up front is one of the biggest areas that we'll see a difference. But first of all, let me go through the trims, which are completely different names for this model year. You'll start with the base S, the select, preferred, carbon edition, premium, premium plus, turbo, and turbo signature. And then right here, the headlight is gonna be one of the biggest changes as far as the design. So they used to be completely rounded. Now you kind of have this squared off design as you can see right there with these rectangular, more so LED headlamps and LED daytime running lights too. The grill's a little bit different with the different dimension, kind of a different dimensional design. You still have the chrome piece running underneath, just an overall really sleek front end in my opinion. You can also see there with the blinker on that these are full LED headlights up front and they're even adaptive on the premium model and up. And I've got a night video showing off the former headlights with the adaptive function and they do really, really well. Now this CX-5 has the signature sole red crystal metallic paint, as you can see. It's just Mazda's premium signature paint. My camera doesn't make it look as good as it actually is. It's just a beautiful paint. And this particular model has 19 inch wheels, which look a little bit different than most of the wheels I've seen. You'll have smaller wheels on lower models, but most of the upper trim levels will have 19 inch wheels and a different variety of 19 inch wheels depending on the trim level because this is the premium plus. The mirrors still get a turn signal in them. They're also heated on this model and we've got blind spot indicators in those mirrors on every trim level. Dimensionally, the CX-5 is still a little bit smaller than some of its competition at 179 inches, where most of them are now over 180 inches. But the CX-50 is supposed to be a little bit bigger and kind of be a little more ground clearance, more rugged type of CX-5. So let me know which one you think looks better and which one you might end up going for. Now all the way to the back, we're gonna get revised taillights as well. So you got that same mirrored rectangular design with some LED in there. Even that blinker is LED. And there's a big change that I'll talk about. You see the all wheel drive badge. Every model is now all wheel drive. There's no more front wheel drive CX-5. This whole rear area is a little bit revised, especially with that bumper. And you still get a dual exhaust outlet. Now the cargo area remains unchanged. The preferred model and up will give you a power lift gate that you can open with that, the key fob or on the inside, but there's no foot activated option if you're looking for that. The cargo area is one of the weaknesses of the CX-5, but the CX-50 supposedly at the time of this video is supposed to have a little bit of a longer cargo floor and possibly more cargo space. So we will definitely see about that, but it's still nice and flat right here. And Mazda gives you a 12 volt power outlet over there, a little storage area down here. And the nice thing is underneath of here, you get a spare tire standard. You don't always see that nowadays in cars, so that's good to see. And another thing that I really like is that Mazda gives us the option of a split folding seat. So you've got, first of all, you've got a 40 and then a 20 middle fold and then a 40 fold over here. And you've got these levers to fold the seats down. And obviously, as you can see, there's not a ton of space because it doesn't fold down flat if those seats are back far enough. And then once you fold everything down, you've got a pretty flat load floor, which is always good and about 60 cubic feet total. But I'm really curious to see what the CX-50's cubic feet is gonna end up being. The same key fob from Mazda carries over. It's very sleek. You've got the typical lock, unlock, and trunk opening button. There's no remote start on the key fob uh, standard though. The smart key system is the same as it was last year. It's on the select package and up. We've got this button to lock it and the mirrors will power fold on this premium plus package and higher, and then you push that button to unlock it again. And it's got a feature to where if you shut the door and you walk away with the key fob, you can have it automatically lock for you if you want. 
Now let's move into the front seat. So in this Premium Plus, we're gonna actually get synthetic seats. You'll get leather seats if you move up, and these seats are actually redesigned. So Mazda says that they're updated to help provide greater stability and create a more natural and comfortable experience. Regardless, I had no problem with the former Mazda CX-5 seats. I think the bolstering looks good. The overall cushion in here looks good and feels pretty good. They're a little bit firm right away, but I'm sure they soften up. And you've got your typical adjustments. It'll be manual on the base model, but then you'll get these power adjustments with tilt, recline, all the usuals, and two-way lumbar support. And then you can get memory settings on these upper trims. In the US, the Select model will give you three-tier heated seats. This Premium Plus and higher will give you the ventilated seats and a heated steering wheel. The thing about this heated steering wheel, it's nice because it's leather wrapped, so it's comfortable to hold on to. It's typical Mazda design, but it's only heated on this small portion on the side where your hand should go. Now back seat space isn't Mazda's forte, but it's really not bad. So right here, you still get some soft materials on the door and some nice finishes. So it still looks nice and feels fairly nice. And you got the same seat material here that you get in the front. There's just one difference between this and the base models. So if you want air conditioning vents, the base model does not have them, but everything else from up will. And the same thing goes with the center folding armrest. So this armrest is not on the base, but everything else will get this. You've got a couple of cup holders, this nice little lift up, uh, storage area and the USB ports. It's kind of cool that the USB ports are in here, but if somebody's going to sit in the middle, you kind of lose access to them. And then on the Premium Plus here, it gives us heated seats in the back. And sitting behind myself at five foot nine, now I have the seat somewhat low, but I still have good foot space and I have good knee space as well. It's not great, it's not class leading, but it's not bad either. And sitting up tall back here, there's plenty of headroom as well. Now coming into the interior of the CX-5, everything is gonna look and feel very similar because it is. I wish that there was a little bit more update in here, primarily with the center console arrangement, and I'll talk about why in a second, but otherwise, overall, it's still very nice. It's sleek and it's modern. Over on the doors, Mazda gives you really nice material up above, nice and soft, a little bit of padding down on that armrest as well, and the finishes will be a little bit different depending on the trim, like nice wood here with the signature. There is some storage down here, but it's a little bit of an awkward space, and my model doesn't really sit in there all that well, but most will. Like I said, the steering wheel is leather wrapped, and it is also heated on this trim level. We've got little paddle shifters back here. We've got the same steering wheel controls. You control the center display, or this LCD display, with the steering wheel. So the seven inch LCD in the middle is on the premium and higher trims. And you can kind of see the outline of the digital display there. You've got some analog, and then it's digital in the middle and it's pretty basic. It doesn't give you as much customization or info as some, but it still works. Right in front of us, you can see the opening for the head-up display. Then there is Mazda's active driving display, which is on this Premium Plus and higher. When you're not driving, it doesn't show you as much, but you can have a bunch of information on here, customize it, or completely remove it from the display, from the windshield if you want to. But then also moving over here, Mazda gives us this 10 and a quarter inch screen standard. Just like it was last year, Mazda has been gradually increasing the size of the screen and you still use a command knob to do things here. You don't touch the screen, but you have shortcuts down below, which I'll show you in a second. You've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard on every trim level here because every trim level gets this screen, but also it's not wireless. I wish it was. I thought Mazda would add that in for this year, but I don't see that as an option. There's still a lot of customization that you can do with this. And our particular model even gets the Bose sound system, which is gonna be on the premium and up. Same with Sirius XM. If you want navigation, you'll have to move to this premium plus, and then let's go into our backup camera. We just have a regular backup camera and it's pretty small on the screen. It's nothing special if you want a 360 camera with parking sensors that will be on the signature model and then moving down from there you'll see the push button start right there the sleek dash with the trim running across and then down here i showed you the heated steering wheel heated seat buttons and then you've got dual zone climate control here on everything except the base model so you and your passenger get it same layout same controls as before below that there is a little storage area with a rubber liner even a 12 volt power outlet a good place to store some stuff if you want wireless charging you're going to have to go for a turbo model those will give you the wireless charging same shifter same center console kind of a big bulky center console in the middle here i wish this was a little bit revised or different material because this has been kind of one of the complaints the all the piano black here but Mazda's got a little bit of a different drive mode button right here. It's not just your regular sport and nothing. 
So it starts in normal, and then you can go up to sport. You got this little graphic on there, and now we even have off-road. I believe this is only on certain models, but the car actually just kind of revved up a little bit when we went into off-road mode. And then the command knob, the control dial here, is right next to our parking brake and brake hold, but you've got shortcuts, and you control the entire display with this knob, which does work pretty well. It just takes getting used to. And there's even a volume knob. My only complaint with this really is that I, so this armrest is pretty short. It's pretty far back. It doesn't extend out very much, and it's kind of a drop for your wrist to be able to control this. Small complaint, but it's a complaint. I wish they would have revised it. Cup holders are nice here, nice and large. They just might get in the way a little bit of your command knob. Then moving back, this armrest is soft right here. Open it up. You've got a little tray that can come out. You've got some charging ports, um, SD card, and a, kind of a small storage area. Mazda gives you a regular soft opening and softly lined glove box. It just doesn't lock. Then we get an automatic dimming rearview mirror with garage controls here, sunglass holders up overhead, and then you can get LED lights on upper trims, regular moonroof, no panoramic roof available in the CX-5. And like I mentioned a little bit, if you want nicer finishes, a little bit more of a premium interior, even more than this one, go for the signature. You'll even get ambient lighting added to that as well. Now, as we go to look under the hood, you might expect some major changes, like maybe getting rid of the six speed, getting an eight speed or a 10 speed. You still have the six speed. You still have two engine options, a naturally aspirated four cylinder and a turbo. The carbon edition no longer gets the turbo though, but there is a little bit of a power bump. So this premium plus gives us this two and a half liter naturally aspirated engine, not the turbo model with the same 187 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. The big news for 2022 is that all wheel drive is standard across the board. Every single CX-5 sold in 2022 now, the 2022 model is gonna be all wheel drive. Even the base model, there is a slight price bump, but not the same that it would have been to add all wheel drive. So there is some value with that, but if you want front wheel drive, you can't get it anymore. But otherwise, these 2.5 turbo or the 2.5 turbo signature are the only two with the turbo, which now can make up to 256 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque, which is just up about six horsepower with premium fuel. Like I said, all these models still come with the six-speed transmission. However, Mazda says they retune the transmission to make it more responsive. So let's get it out on the road. All right, y'all, we are behind the wheel of this 2022 CX-5 now. And you might have been hoping for some updates to this base engine, but you don't get any. It's still a capable engine for most people. They'll probably be happy with it. But obviously, the turbo is there and available with a little bit more power now if you want. Now Mazda has claimed some improvements to the driving dynamics with more rigidity um, to the frame and the structure of the CX-5, but also better damping. So I've always thought the CX-5 drove nice, has a little bit of a firm suspension, but a very good compliant suspension as well. Handles well, the steering feels good, and we'll, we'll see how it is. I won't be able to drive very far with it or really get on it a whole lot, but we'll see what it's like in a short test drive. They also claim that it is now even a little bit quieter. And this is already probably, from my experience, the quietest in this class. You know, once you get to luxury vehicles, it's, it's right in line with some of those. But compared to the CRV, RAV4, Tucson, it's quieter than those. And this is a naturally aspirated four cylinder. So you have a more linear, crescendoing type of power whereas the turbo you put the pedal down and you get some pretty quick instant torque as far as the handling goes the weight of the steering is good it's a little bit little tiny bit heavier than some and it's hard for me to know because these are not my typical streets that i drive on with the ride comfort but there's a lot of bumps on this road and it really soaks it up well you can probably hear it maybe see it but it's still doing a nice job if you want the softest plushest ride the CX-5 isn't necessarily for you, but it's not a bumpy ride by any means. It's actually still a nice, compliant ride overall. And they've made this six-speed more responsive, they claim. So I didn't really have any troubles with the six-speed before. I thought it was actually a pretty nice six-speed overall. You know, some people might want more gears a little better efficiency, but I really don't have any complaints with it. I've been lucky enough to be able to spend a couple weeks driving a CX-5 around a couple of different times, 
and I've really enjoyed it. Hauling my family around, it's been fine. It's not as spacious as some of the competitors, but the CX-50 is supposed to be a little more adventuresome, a little bit bigger. So I'm really curious to see how that goes, and I believe it's going to have the same powertrains, including the optional turbo, which will be really nice. But if you're still looking for a compact crossover with a premium feel that can have turbo power, and have some nice finishes and have a lot of features on different trim levels, the CX-5 is still a really nice option for you. While we're sitting here, I wanna talk about ergonomics. I like the screen size is good. The control knob to use it is fine. The display is a little more simplified, but Mazda wants this to be driver oriented, so that works. Dual zone climate control. I just wish that this center console was a little bit different, and that's really about it. I mean, otherwise I really enjoy my time with the CX-5. Now I'm gonna put us in sport mode and there's a nice little red graphic that shows up on the display. So a little more peppy, let's see. And that was quick to respond. I mean, you didn't have to wait for a super huge delay. We were already going slow, but let's get on it again. That was quick. That was also quick to respond too. Now I don't have a lot of experience with the non-turbo model to really compare that. But just a little bit of pedal down now still still quick so i believe mazda when they say this is a quicker six-speed transmission now and that's a good thing i'm excited about that but you're not going to have blazing speed or a ton of passing power with this particular model but i enjoyed my time driving this let's go ahead and wrap things up so to wrap things up on this 2022 mazda cx-5 i like the little updates to the styling in the front and back that mazda did especially with these headlights i think they look pretty slick mazda supposedly revamped the suspension it's hard for me to tell just with my short drive here hopefully i can get one for a longer period of time to show you but even with just these small updates i still think mazda is a very competitive model in this segment with a lot to like you've got a premium interior you've got sleek design you've got a lot of features especially at those lower couple trim levels for the price and now all-wheel drive is even standard the one thing i wish is i wish mazda did a little bit more on the interior ergonomics but otherwise there's a lot to like about this CX-5. Let me know down below what you think of this CX-5 and what you think of the upcoming CX-50, which is supposed to be a little bit more of a rugged version of the CX-5 and maybe a little bit bigger. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to Town North Mazda. Be sure to check in the description for that. Have a great day.